Okay, this week's video is a request, and it's going to add an extra video to the um, Beginner Projects series, right? I had a request from a guy called John O'Brien, and he's trying to do something, and he's having a problem, and it's to do with thin spindles. So, let's get on with this. Okay, as I said, this is a request, and it's going to add an extra video to the series. Right, uh, John is a beginner toner. He has his lathe, from what he tells me, about six or seven weeks. And um, he's been following along with the series, and he requests that I do this. So, as you know, if somebody requests that I do a video, I will do it for them, right? Now, what John's trying to do is, John is trying to turn a wand for his son. All right, and he's having the, the problems that he's described to me. I know, right? He's, he's what, what, what he's doing, they're, they're simple beginner mistakes, but by doing certain things, you can get over them pretty easily, right? Number one, he was saying that what's happening is every time he tries to cut his uh blank splits, right. If you're doing a wand, one of the most important things is blank choice. And the whole thing is the grain has to be straight, right? Now, I'm talking beginner turners here, right? If you're advanced, you can do them with spiral grain or cross grain or anything like that. But for a beginner turner, make sure your grain is straight, right? And make sure it's big enough to lock into a set of jaws. They're the t they're basically two of the main things, right? So, and the locking into the set of jaws is only for doing the end, right? Now, I have a piece of tiger wood here with sap wood in it, so it should actually end up making quite a nice wand. So, locking into the set of jaws. Use your tail stock. Lock it down good and tight, and the first thing I'm going to do is round it off. Right now, uh, one of your problems, John, of it splitting, and uh, the reason that is is because of your grind direction. Right, it could be a couple of other things which I'll go through, but your main one is probably a grind direction. Right, so I'm just going to quickly round this off. Now, while you still got the rough and gouge in your hand, it's handy to, how would you put it, to lay out your wand, right? Now, what I want is, I want a handle, right? I want a bezel, there's a lot of words for this, people call it bezel, fulcrum, I can't remember. But for this one, I'm just gonna call it the, be the bezel, right? A bezel and the blade, right? So what I want to know is where all of those things are. Right, so if we do a cut there, right, handle and bezel, blade, right. So with the parting tool, I'm just going to start bringing that down. Now, this is an important thing. I am working the tool in that direction, but I'm doing the turning in that direction, right. The tool is going away from the headstock, but the direction of turning, if you get what I mean, is going towards the headstock. It reduces the vibration if you do it this way. Deliberately do this slowly. Right. 
as usual, I'm not worried about finish cuts or anything else at the moment. I'm just getting this down to size, that's all. Now I have the blank roughly to a rough shape where I've got the handle, room for a bezel and a blade. Right. Now this is where you can start to have fun. You can basically let your imagination go wild and do whatever you want. Right. But yet again, same thing, I'm going to work the tool away from the headstock but I'm going to work in the direction of it. So what I want to do is kind of section the wand out. All right? So I have the flat bit at the top here and then I'm going to do the fancy bits here and then I'll get there. All right? So you can do, as I said, you can do whatever you want. Right. Sometimes for cuts you are going to have to move the tool in that direction, just be very light about it. Right. Something you have to watch for is the tool never goes underneath the wand because it guarantees it will snap it. There's a little bump there I don't like so I'm very carefully going to get rid of it. Because I can feel that flexing there now. I don't know if the camera's picking that up, right? But you see the flex that's in that now? Right? That's because I'm back up working on a thin bit rather than down here where the thicker wood is. Right. And as I said, when it gets to here, you can do whatever you want. It's up to you. But you do have to be careful here. Slow and careful. Because if you hit that too hard, that flex that you're seeing, the flex I showed you earlier on, is just gonna snap this one clean in two. Now something I've found that's aesthetically pleasing in a wand is if you're doing a lot of uh, things like this in them make them go from small to large it just looks better uh, but that's just my opinion Right, now I'm going to switch to a detail gouge so I can get this, these bits done. Right, so I'm leaving it square there. Right, just to find the bezel a little bit, or whatever you want to call it.
Move down the handle. Nice. Now, when you get down to the handle, it doesn't really matter what way you cut because it's a good thick thing there. It's not going to vibrate. And that's up to you again. Let your imagination go. Whatever way you want. Try this tilt. Maybe. If you are uh, churning these things out, try and make them all different. It's just uh, gives people a choice. So they're just churning these things out. Right. Now, when you've got that far, you've the basic shape of the wand in, give it a sand. So I'll do that and I'll be back in a sec. Alright then, this has been sanded and Yorkshire gritted. I don't put finishes on my ones because um, basically I'm fans of ones and of the movies. Uh, I have a firm me frequently, ones aren't shiny. So I just Yorkshire grit them just to make sure they're nice and smooth right. and that's what we've ended up with at the moment right. now what I want to do is part off this end and you can do this any way you want you can use skews what I use is a, a detail gouge just because I find it handy right. you, you, can, you can use anything you want really to part these off What I want to do is kind of turn it into a point, but not a sharp point, right? Off it goes. Get that out of the way. Sand that tip. Right. Piece of 150. Make sure to round that top off. You don't want a little Jimmy sticking his, stabbing him, stabbing his sister with this, right? Grab a cloth I used for the Yorkshire grit. I'm going to burnish the top a little bit with Yorkshire grit and it brings it down to the same as the rest of it. Right. Then, the end. I said there's loads of ways of doing this, this is just the way I do it because I production on these things and I need speed. Right. I just cut in there at an angle. I end up with like a point on the bottom. Right. Get in the pocket. Right. Take that off. Get rid of it. out of the way it's just a simple matter of sand the end of it
you end up with a finished wand. Right, here's another couple that I've done. As I said, you can just really let your imagination go. Right, up here on the blade. Just let your imagination go and do whatever you want. Um, apparently the length of a wand is supposed to be around about 13 inches, just in case anybody wants to know. Right, as I said, that was just an extra one. Uh, that got thrown into this series because I was asked about it and basically for tin spindles for beginner turners that's the way to do it right just remember the three things right make sure your grain is straight tool work goes that direction but working on the piece itself goes that direction basically you move your tools towards the tailstock but you walk towards the headstock. You move your tool along towards the headstock. Okay, when you get into intricate stuff or bigger stuff, you'll need uh, like a brace and you'll be dotting around from piece to piece. But for beginners, which is what, what this series is aimed at, that's the way to do it, right? Straight grain, move your tool, your tool movement direction, is towards the tailstock your walking direction is towards the headstock so hopefully john that's sorted out your problem for you um those rules apply to any thin spindle when you're a beginner so hopefully it's helped out other people as well if you got that new that if you wouldn't mind leaving a like on the video and i'll see you in the next one